What's up, my beautiful people? Welcome to episode nine of the Godly Wisdom Podcast. I am your host, Clifford J, and thank you all so much for tuning in today. Hey, if this is your first time tuning in, I just want to say welcome. Thank you for, for, for coming. Thank you for being on a part of this squad, being a part of this family. If you like us, stick around. I pray you do. I mean, hey, who doesn't like Godly Wisdom? Um, but if, if you have been a part of this family already, you've been showing love and support, I just want to say thank you. I mean, the love has been mind blowing and I don't want to just be going all around. I want us to get straight into today's topic. Today, we're talking about how Christ is very consistent. So be consistent. Tips on developing a consistent character. Christ. Oh, my God. Is very consistent. So be consistent. I'm very excited about this because this is one of the topics. This is one of the lessons that changed my life and is still changing my life. And so I genuinely want to help you with this, right? Um, today's episode is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm excited for this. Um, so let me calm down. Let me calm down a little bit. I'm definitely a little hyper. But um, as we always do, as the custom of this podcast, every every episode we start with, you know, the Proverbs of the day. Um, the Proverbs of the day today is found in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 20 to 21 and Amplified. When you read it in a verse 20 says that, so you will walk in the way of good men. That is those of personal integrity, moral courage, and honorable character. Peep the word character, right? We're trying to develop a consistent character. And it says, and keep to the paths of the righteous. And then in verse 21 says that, for the upright, those who are in the right standing with God, will live in the land, and those of integrity who are blameless in God's sight will remain in it. So it is very important for you to note this. And, and, and the reason why I'm saying that is because it is very important for you to have an honorable character, for you to have integrity. And, and we can tell that somebody has an, an honorable character based on how consistent they are and the good that they do, even when people are watching, even when people are not watching. That is when integrity comes in. Right. Integrity is, is how you live your life. You know, when 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 people are not watching, integrity is how God how God sees you. Right. So you may fool us with your gifts and everything, but integrity is bigger than just, you know, what you do for people to see. Now, the reason why I chose this topic, Christ is very consistent. So be consistent is that there are many people in the body of Christ who claim to be like Christ but they are lacking the character of Christ, which is consistency. I mean, the most consistent person I know has to be Christ. The most consistent person I know has to be God. But unfortunately, the people who cling to walk in his image are not consistent. Now, me talking about this topic, I'm even guilty of talking about this because I'm not perfect, right? I'm also working on me. And so the reason why I'm sharing this with you is not for me to be like, yo, I've reached. This is something I'm still working on. But uh, there's areas in my life that I've definitely gotten rid of inconsistency um, through some of the things that I'm going to share with you. Um, and so that is one. And I thought that another reason why I should make this video, this episode about Christ is very consistent, so be consistent, is that. I mean, what is the best follow-up from last episode about dating yourself than this episode? What is the best follow-up? Nothing beats this. We talked about last episode, dating yourself. And I think it is best for us to, after, and while even dating ourselves, one of the things we can even continue with is to work on our consistency in our lives, right? And so that is still a form of you dating yourself, you trying to grow in who you are. And the next reason why I want to talk about this topic and I want us to discuss this today is that we have many frustrated Christians who are frustrated specifically at God for watching them fail. A lot of y'all are very frustrated right now at God because you feel like God watched you fail. But the truth is that it's not God's fault. A lot of the things that we failed in is not because God failed to come through for us is simply because we are too inconsistent. Our inconsistency is causing us to fail. And when I look at the body of Christ, 
I see that a lot. So I was like, you know what? This might be a chance for me to add my two cents to this. And lastly, the last reason why I, def- I definitely wanted to talk about this topic is that I realized that oftentimes the greatest people oftentimes um, begin their life with inconsistency. And those people need specific people to shape, to teach, to challenge, and to encourage them to be consistent. The people that God wants to use the most, if they don't have help, right now their life look like they're the ones who are very inconsistent. But if those same people have people in their life that will shape them, that will teach them, that will challenge them, that will encourage them to be consistent, oh man, they will be great. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because um, I'm gonna I'm gonna gossip about my pastor Joe Asma. A lot of y'all are probably like tired of me talking about my pastor. But the reason why I talk about him a lot on this podcast is because I believe that if I'm able to go far in life, it's because I'm standing on his shoulders. Um, And he's somebody who has gone ahead. He's somebody that, you know, I see him very consistent in all he do, all that he does. And um, one of the greatest things he said to my face I never forget before the year ended last year um, in 2021 was that you're too inconsistent. And he told me to pick something, prioritize my life and focus on it. And that is one of the ways that you can literally be consistent. We'll get to that later. That if you have a priority, if you prioritize your life, it becomes easy for you to live a consistent Christian life. The reason why a lot of y'all, oh, and I'm going ahead of myself, the reason why a lot of y'all cannot stay consistent is because you're doing everything. Jack of all trades, that's good, but master of none. And after that conversation with my pastor, it literally opened my eyes. Like it's like a, It was like a bulb. Like It just went beep. And I, after that, I literally started to prioritize my life and try to be more intentional about living a consistent life. And so, Pastor, if you're listening, if you're watching this, shout outs to you. Thank you so much for being honest with me and also living your life. Um, I mean, you're like one of the consistent people I know. And so um, it's very encouraging to watch you um, live consistently in all you do and not just consistent um, just in doing it, but consistency and excellence as you do all that you do. And so, yeah. So um, you're listening to this. You're like, all right, why is having a consistent character even important? I want to give you some importance of having a consistent character as a Christian. Number one, when you are consistent, you can be depended on. Inconsistent people can't be trusted with nothing or with much. When you're consistent in character, more comes to you. So it is up to you to realize that if you keep losing things, if you keep losing people, sometimes it is a sign that you're inconsistent in your life. If you're inconsistent, you're going to keep losing people. If you're inconsistent in how you love people, you're going to lose them. If you're inconsistent, even in building a friendship, you're going to lose it. If you're inconsistent with the things that you have, you're going to lose them. If you don't take care of them consistently, you will lose them. So that is why it's important to have a Christian character, is that when you're consistent, number one, you are dependable. Number two, consistency develops growth. Any consistent person grows on anything they do. Consistency develops growth. And anybody who is consistent in life grows in anything that they put their hands on to do. That means that you can kick stagnation in the butt when you're consistent. The reason why you're experiencing a lot of stagnation right now, it's not because of the devil. It's simply because you're not consistent in the things you need to do in order to be successful as a Christian. I double dare you to start and remain. Anyway, 
the next reason why it's important for you to have a consistent character as a child of God is because consistency opens doors and helps you to achieve your God-given assignment through your relationship with him. Doors will open for you if you are consistent and you'll be able to achieve a lot of the things God has created you to, to do if you are literally consistent. And that can only be built through your relationship with him. So stop trying to be a consistent person. Stop trying to live a life of consistency without Christ. If you want to be consistent, you need to totally depend on Christ to be consistent. And the last importance that I would give you. Okay. I'll give you two more. Two importance on why you need to live a consistent character, a consistent life, is that consistency is important in your character because wherever there's consistency, there's success. Success is simply when an, when an opportunity meets preparation or consistency. So when you're consistent in your character, it is very important because consistency brings forth success. So the equation of success is opportunity plus preparation plus consistency equals to success. If you want to be successful in anything, be consistent. And lastly, consistency is important because a consistent person is fun to be around. I mean, think about it. Who don't like to be around a consistent person? The reason why you love God the way you do is because his love for you is consistent. Be like God. Let everything about your life be consistent. If people keep running away from you, um, hello, it is a sign that you're not consistent. They, they don't know what they're going to get from you today. One day they might get you happy. The next day you over there throwing. No, no, be consistent. And when you're consistent, it's fun for people to be around you. I, I personally don't like to be around people who are inconsistent now that I'm learning to be consistent because people like that stress you out. They have you on an emotional roller coaster and ain't nobody got time for that. Anyway, so now you're listening like, all right, bro, I need some tips on developing a Christian, consistent Christian character or a consistent character as a Christian. Number one, if you want to develop a Christian, consistent character, a consistent Christian character. Number one, identify the aspect of your behavior that require change and change them. Because the truth is to be inconsistent about something oftentimes mean that you're consistent about something else. To be inconsistent about something means that you're already consistent about something else. Now, whether that thing that you're consistent about is sleep, you're still consistent in sleeping instead of working. So you have to identify those things. You have to sit with yourself to identify those things that you're inconsistent about and the things that you're consistent about and put a plan to it to change it. One way you can identify those things is, is to do it how David did it in the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verses 23 to, to 24, one of my favorite um, scriptures to pray. And I'm going to read in a passion translation for you. David was literally on his knees crying out. He says, God, I invite you, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. He said, examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on and lead me back to your glorious everlasting way. The path that brings me back to you. David is willingly asking God to show him areas in his life, in his life that needs polishing. He's literally asking God to show him areas in his life that he needs to be consistent on. I wonder if we do this. I wonder if in your prayer life, you ask God to, hey, God, show me areas in my life that I need to stop being consistent in 
and reveal to me areas that I need to be consistent in. If you do that, God will literally show you and help you. So that's number one. Identify aspect of your behavior that requires change. That means asking God to search you, search you, search you in and out. Because you may be able to fool us, but he knows you inside and out, right? Number two, stop doing too much. If you want to be consistent as a Christian, stop doing too much. You're inconsistent as a child of God because you're doing too much. That means prioritize your life. Prioritize the important things in your life and stick to them. Make the priorities a priority. For so long, the reason why I was literally all over the place and I couldn't be I couldn't be consistent is, is because I was doing too much. And, and, and that is one of the side effects or one of the bad things about being too gifted, being so gifted. When you're gifted at everything, when you can do almost everything, if you're not careful, you can be inconsistent with all of them. Pick one thing and focus on it. Prioritize them. These things are a priority. And so I will not jump to do number four if I have not done number one and number two. Have some priorities in your life and stick to it. Number three, if you want to live a consistent Christian life, have a to-do and not to-do list for the day, for the week, and for the month. Literally one of the chicken nuggets <laughs> that I learned from my pastor that transformed my life. I do this now even in the small little things. The reason why I could even have episodes filmed for this podcast for you guys is because I have prioritized things in my life. Literally, people are always DM me like, how do you have time to do everything that you're doing? It's because I prioritize. I have a to-do list, things I'm supposed to do. And I have a not-to-do list, things I'm not supposed to do, things that I would not do. I have that list for, the, for the every day. I have that list for every week. And I have that list for the month. So make sure you have a to-do list and not to-do list. Number four, if you want to live a consistent Christian life, don't allow anybody else's indiscipline to become your emergency. That means don't be tossed to and fro. I'm going to say it again. If you want to live a Christian consistent life, if you genuinely want to be consistent as a Christian, don't allow somebody else's indiscipline to become your emergency. That means don't be tossed to and fro. This person comes to you, hey, I need you to do this and you're going. I need you to do this and you're going. I need you to do that and you're going. You never finish anything always being tossed around. Have your head fixed in one thing, fixed in one place, one place. And finish the assignment. Number six. If you want to be consistent. Know that you're inconsistent right now because you talk too much. Oh my God. A lot of y'all are inconsistent because you keep making promises that are bigger than your reality. You're inconsistent in a lot of things right now because you talk too much. You keep making promises to people. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And that is not your reality. Instead of making promises about what you're going to do, stop making promises and just live it. You're inconsistent because you're talking too much. My bad. <laughs> I don't really feel bad. I needed to let you know this because these are one of the things I had to learn. And um, if nobody is telling you around you, hopefully I think I'm that friend. I, I believe I like to believe that we're friends, we're family. So at least I'm that friend that I could be honest with you over social media and as you're listening to me. Number seven, probably my favorite one that I learned from Pastor. Stop making excuses or justifying everything. Because excuses is the language of losers. If you want to live a consistent life as a child of God, if you literally want to live a consistent life as a child of God, stop making excuses for everything and stop justifying everything. Because excuses is the language of losers. Take ownership. 
of everything. I think that is a point in itself, and I don't need to explain anything. Point number eight. One way you can be very consistent in your life as a child of God is that you have to be accountable to someone who holds you accountable for being consistent in your life. That is a question you have to ask yourself. Who holds me accountable in order for me to be consistent in my life? Have accountability. People who can literally speak into your life and tell you, hey, man, you haven't been consistent with this. I need you to be consistent with that. One way I can be consistent right now is because I have, again, my pastor literally holding me accountable to make sure that uh, I'm not doing too much, but I'm doing what I need to do. Note this, that doing a lot does not mean that you're doing the right thing. So take your time to make sure that you're doing the right thing instead of just being known for doing a lot. Again, jack of all trades, but master of none. Don't be that Christian. Point number nine. I have two more points for you. So point number nine, I'll give you point number 10 and we're done. If you want to live a consistent life, don't give up trying to be persistent. Don't give up trying. Be persistent. Don't literally believe in the lie that I've already messed up, so let me just forget it. No. God uses persistence to produce purpose. So literally be persistent. Don't give up trying. Keep on trying. Be consistent in your trying. Because the process is sweet. When you stick to the process, it may seem like it's not working, but, it, but be consistent to the process. And I promise you, if you're consistent to the process, anybody that goes to the gym will tell you. Sometimes the process may seem like, man, it's hard. It may, feel, it may seem like, yo, I'm failing today. But if you stay consistent to the process, you'll get a lot out, out of it. And the last point I want to give you, probably one of the most important things anybody can tell you if you want to live a Christian life, if you want to live a consistent Christian life, surround yourself with consistent people. Because your life is a subtotal of the people you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with Wise people, you become wise. If you surround yourself with fools, you become a fool. If you surround yourself with consistent people, you become consistent. If you surround yourself with inconsistent people, you'll be very inconsistent. So the question then becomes, who is around you? That is a question I want you to reflect with today. That is the end of this episode. But I want to encourage you that you can be very consistent. I know that sometimes being consistent can seem so hard because it's like, oh my God, I have to be perfect. No, you don't have to be perfect. But if you can apply these things that I just gave you, it's, it's a process. And um, I, I just want to encourage you, you could do it. There are things in my life that I never thought I could be very consistent with, but now I'm doing it. So know that you can do it. You're the reason why I made this podcast, to encourage you that you can be consistent as a child of God. You don't have to give up. Get back up and keep pushing. Hey, let me know how this podcast is helping you by leaving a review um, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on YouTube, um, and subscribe. Subscribe to the podcast on all podcasts and platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching the video. Share the episodes with your friends and family. Um, and I pray that this has been helping you. I pray that you have been blessed by it. And um, yeah. Um, see you next week. Remember that as we're bridging the gap, this is still our season of order. And lastly, don't forget to be blessed, be yourself and be happy. Stay consistent. Peace.